everyone, this is Shreya from the HealthSpan clinical team. I'm excited to announce that at HealthSpan, we've recently broadened our scope to understand how rapamycin can have implications beyond organ, metabolic, and skin health. We've placed a significant emphasis on new research in hair loss and have determined how rapamycin can potentially play a key role in tackling hair loss right at the root. Now, when thinking about hair loss, you may be thinking of androgenetic alopecia, or AGA. Now, this is commonly known as male pattern or female pattern baldness. And for much time, hair loss has been understood as a result of genetics. But hair loss actually involves much more complex biological phenomena than previously understood. Recent research has highlighted the roles of cellular senescence and autophagy dysfunction in the process of hair loss. So in this video, we're gonna do a couple of things. We'll learn a little bit about the mechanisms behind hair growth. We'll explore how cellular mechanisms can contribute to hair loss. And ultimately, we'll evaluate the potential of rapamycin as a therapeutic agent for hair growth. Before we get into talking about the cellular mechanisms behind hair loss, it's important to first understand how our hair grows. Hair growth revolves around a complex process within hair follicles. Now these hair follicles are like small specialized units. Each follicle undergoes three stages, growth or antigen, rest or telogen, and shedding or catagen. Now the phase that we wanna focus on is the growth or antigen phase. This stage is crucial as this is when hair actively lengthens. In order for hair follicles to enter the growth or antigen phase, we need two key types of cells to be functioning properly. The first is hair follicle stem cells or HFSCs. These cells are located directly in the hair follicle in the part known as the bulge area. The HFSCs are like a start button for hair growth. When they're activated, they trigger the growth phase for the hair follicle. The second key type of cell is the dermal papilla cells, or DPCs. Think of these cells as support agents. Now, they're located in the bulb of the hair follicle, and they play a key role in sending out important signaling molecules to the HFSCs to help trigger hair growth. These signals are a blend of what we call growth factors. Now, DPCs release several different types of growth factors. Some of these ensure that the hair follicle receives adequate blood supply, which is crucial for hair health, while others directly stimulate the hair to grow. The interactions between stem cells in the hair follicle, or HSFCs, and the nearby cells, or DPCs, is very important and needs to be just right. It's like a carefully choreographed dance that keeps hair growing healthily and continuously. Now that you know a little bit about what healthy hair growth looks like at the cellular level, let's talk about what happens when this balanced dance between HSFCs and DPCs goes awry. Scientists have determined two cellular causes for hair loss, the first being cellular senescence. If you've watched our videos before, you probably know a bit about cellular senescence. Senescence refers to the process where cells enter a state of permanent growth arrest. We call these cells zombie cells because they continue to exist, but they no longer divide or support the body's functions. Instead, they can release harmful substances that damage nearby cells and contribute to aging and various diseases. Just like any other cell in the body, the cells in and around hair follicles, like the HFSCs and DPCs, can undergo senescence. When this happens, these cells stop replicating and instead become dysfunctional. This dysfunctionality can ultimately impede hair growth. In a recent study, scientists examined dermal papilla cells, or DPCs, from balding scalps and discovered that these cells showed signs of early aging known as premature senescence. This included changes in their shape and a decrease in their normal functions. 
These aging signs were then confirmed by an increase in a specific marker called senescence-associated beta-galaxivase, or SA-beta-gal. Now, this marker is commonly used to identify senescent cells. Now, a second root cause of hair loss is autophagy dysfunction. You can think of autophagy as our body's self-cleaning process. It's like an internal maintenance system where cells break down and recycle their own damaged or unnecessary parts. This helps keep cells healthy and efficient. Impaired autophagy has been found to be one of the causes of hair loss and hair thinning. In a recent study, scientists looked at HFSCs and examined autophagic flux, which means they examined how much autophagy was happening. They found that in these hair follicle stem cells, there was a decrease in autophagy. This ultimately led to the accumulation of damaged proteins and organelles, which further exacerbated hair follicle aging. Now, both cellular senescence and autophagy dysfunction, which is the failure in the cell self-cleaning process, have been connected to hair loss and thinning. But what causes it? What triggers these molecular changes in our bodies? If you've been with us before, you might already know the answer to that question. It's mTOR. mTOR, or the mammalian target of rapamycin, is at the root of both cellular senescence and autophagy dysfunction. mTOR is a key regulator of cell growth and division. As we age though, mTOR can become hyperactive. This hyperactivity can push cells, including hair follicle cells, into a state of senescence. These senescent cells ultimately accumulate and can interrupt hair growth. mTOR also plays a key role in autophagy. With age, increased mTOR activity can actually lead to a reduction in autophagy. This means that cells, including hair follicle cells, are unable to clear out their damaged components. Now, these can accumulate and disrupt cellular function. Understanding that mTOR is at the core of these two major causes of hair loss opens up the opportunity for addressing hair loss by targeting mTOR. Rapamycin is a powerful suppressor of the mammalian target of rapamycin or mTOR pathway. This means that when mTOR becomes overly active, leading to various undesirable cellular consequences, rapamycin can step in to calm mTOR down. This can restore mTOR's proper balanced function. As mTOR returns to its normal state, cellular senescence is mitigated. This prevents the buildup of non-functional aging cells. Additionally, autophagy is increased, meaning that cells can effectively clean out and recycle their damaged or unnecessary components. This leads to healthier cell function and potentially better maintenance of hair health. Recently, rapamycin has shown some promising results in hair regeneration studies. A groundbreaking study by UCLA researchers demonstrated the efficacy of rapamycin in promoting hair growth. In the study, rapamycin was applied topically to the hair on mice during their telogen or rest phase. The application of rapamycin led to a rapid transition to the growth or antigen phase. This was evidenced by increased hair growth for the mice. Furthermore, the study noted a significant rise in autophagy markers in rapamycin-treated mice, indicating that there was enhanced autophagic activity where the mice's cells were more effective in cleaning out and recycling their damaged components. Now, the researchers also tested metformin, another mTOR inhibitor, and found that it similarly promoted hair regeneration through autophagy induction. These findings highlight the possibility of using mTOR inhibitors, such as rapamycin, to limit cellular senescence and adjust autophagy in order to improve hair follicle health and promote hair regrowth. For many years now, individuals have been using rapamycin for its anti-aging effects at the cellular level, but expanding the use of mTOR inhibitors like rapamycin 
could be a game changer in tackling hair loss. This area of research isn't just about getting to the root of hair growth. It's also about finding new effective ways to help the countless people dealing with hair loss around the world. Now, it's important to keep in mind that what we've reviewed in this video is just a brief overview of the role that cellular senescence and autophagy play in the promotion of hair growth. Hair follicle biology is a complex concept, and to learn more about the cellular mechanisms behind hair growth, and to learn more about topical rapamycin for hair, you can visit our website at www.gethealthfan.com or click the link in the description below. With that, this is Shreya signing off. See you all next time.